admittedly has transferred their title. Is that complicated? Um, Madam Chair, Senator Michael, um, yes, these are very complicated real estate transactions that involve written, written deeds that are that make it um, make it very difficult to prosecute. We've devoted a lot of resources to this, and we'll continue to do so. To answer your question, Senator. I think Senator Anderson did answer it. Um, we simply house the in our agency now because this is a money saver for us. Uh, if, if I've got if I've got these complicated, difficult cases to do, and I've got an easy administrative licensing action on technical hooks, I'm actually going to wind up saving money uh, by having this kind of licensing scheme. They also involve difficult real estate transactions that we've developed some expertise in. But having said that, the goal was to get this thing, get this problem solved. And wherever we get the problem solved, and however anybody can cooperate, I think everyone's committed to doing that uh, in the benefit of the home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have the same questions regarding licensure. It seems to me that most of that financial licensure does come through commerce, and I'm not sure that we really want to start having yet another branch of government affected. And some of you know my preference would be that we can have so many different places that we do licensure already, so to add another one. I'm glad to hear that the Attorney General's office doesn't hold strongly to the feeling that it has to be part of the Attorney General's office if, if licensure is the way that we hope to gain some regulation. Senator, thank you. I have two questions, actually, but <clears throat> the first one goes back to what Senator Michelle said. Um, what currently is being done with the files in your office? Have, have complaints been filed with the Commerce Department, or have lawsuits been begun, or what is the status of them? Because I would agree something should be done. Mr. Cox. Madam Chair, uh, Senator Ryder, we referred many of these matters over to the Department of Commerce. Uh, and so I think Commissioner Wilson would be the right one. We're, at, we're willing to share any data that's helpful for consumers and have, uh, and we'll continue to do that. Uh, we get it. We are continuing to get complaints. We got one in last week where someone lost $133,000 in that case. Uh, we will continue to share all of that information. Well, Madam Chair, I, um, I know that the Department of Commerce has pursued some of these cases, and I'm sure you can, you'll hear about that from them. Um, and I guess I'm just sitting here thinking maybe <coughs> by passing this bill we might be able to better clarify the responsibilities, you know, and of who's going to take the lead on this. I think that would be useful. Wh whichever way it ends up. Senator Wright, do you have another question? I want to hear. I think I'll even go on to later and yeah, it deals like with the see. licensing. So I think Senator Wright should have people testify yeah. here. But Senator Wright, I just have one quick question and perhaps uh, no one has a precise answer, but if someone could quantify. I know we're hearing many cases and stacks of cases, but if someone can quantify actual numbers, that's so really something I'd like to know. So that's whoever has that information as they as testing as possible. Mr. Cox, do you have a probably in the best position of anybody to answer that. Uh, Madam Chair, Senator Fiskaden, unless someone did an actual study, of course, any time it's difficult to quantify. <coughs> Let me give you a sense of the numbers. The first case we followed in, involving home funding. Uh, about 40 of these properties spread out throughout the metro area, including Delano and, and, and other places, as well as in the center cities and inner suburbs. Um, the second case we filed involved in the grant, we have not completed discovery, but it appears that the number of unlawful detainer actions taken to throw out former homeowners out of their home exceeded 200. So right there. Just in those two cases, we're talking about 250 transactions, not small transactions, we're talking about millions and millions of dollars and, and substantial homeowner losses just in those two. I, I am aware of at least 60 to 100 other, other transactions. So we're talking hundreds of these transactions at minimum. Senator Wright, just um, for clarification, maybe somebody knows what the approximate home ownership is in the seven. The metro area, and I, and, I, and, and I don't say that to belittle the 240 cases that have been identified for those homeowners, I'm sure it's devastating, but we are probably the number one or certainly in the top three to five states that has the highest home ownership um, in the United States, and I would like to know, and I'm sure that's on file somewhere, what the total number of homeowner-occupied 
homes is in the metropolitan area. Senator Ryan, maybe somebody from the department can speak to those kinds of numbers. Senator Anderson, would you like to have? Senator Clare, is it? Yeah, Madam Chair, just one quick question. How many professionals, this is for Mr. Cox, Madam Chair, how many professionals actually obtain their license through the Attorney General's office right now? Mr. Cox. Uh, professional license, uh, Madam Chair, Senator Clare, we, we do not have a lot of licensing of professionals right now. We've taken these actions because uh, we saw a tremendous need uh, to move quickly to, to stop this problem. Uh, but the answer to your question is, as far as I know, none other than we do license uh, dating clubs, health clubs, and that sort of thing. But professionals, you know, we have. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Madam Chair. We have two witnesses from ACORN that would like to testify. Um, Mike Dixon, who's here along with his son Chase, and um, Sandy Alcoser. Alcoser. And um, I wonder if I could just ask how many other folks are here with ACORN who are in support of them, could just raise their hands. Lots of people here in support. So thank you for all being here. And with that, what do I want you to have, Okay. Mr. Dixon and Chase, welcome to our committee. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you guys for giving me the opportunity and hopefully a chance uh, okay. to redeem my self-respect here. And um, you can give us your name as you start. Uh, my name is Mike Dixon. Um, my wife and I and our three children live in a two-bedroom apartment in Fridley. Last June, we were evicted from our four-bedroom house, which we had owned for 20 years, and had been in our family for 50. My wife had complications when our son Chase was born and had serious life-threatening problems for two years after. I had to care for the kids and lost a good job I had at Honeywell. We fell behind on our mortgage and went into foreclosure. Henry Grant contacted us and offered us a way to save our house by him buying it and selling it back to us. We, we, he bought it from us for 87000 and said we could buy it back from him for 27000 more, which we, you know, we agreed to that. He made the deal sound good. We were all happy that we'd be able to save our house. After everything my wife had been through, we didn't want to lose the house. We had to pay Grant $1,000 a month, we had, and we had a hard time paying it, but Carol and me both went back to work, and I found a way to make the payments. We had been making the payments for a year when Grant sent us an eviction notice. He gave us 30 days to move out or to find a loan to buy the house back. We didn't know we had to get another loan until we got that letter. We thought that we were buying the house back from Grant and that he was giving us the loan. We also thought that we'd be buying the house back from him for 107000 but his letter said the price was 117000 this was more than what we had thought we were going to pay, but what could we do? We immediately contacted a mortgage company and got approved for a loan for 117. But when we had the financing lined up, we jacked the price up to 124,000, and the mortgage company wouldn't go for it. I don't know how he could have changed it like that. He said in his letter it was 117,000, and that. And that's where it should have been set, but then he changed it to one point four. Something like that should be illegal. When we couldn't get the mortgage, Grant kicked us out. He didn't have a reason to kick us out. We were making our payments, but he wanted more money. He said he was being a nice guy by giving us an extra 15 days to move on. We had to scramble to find a place. After this happened, I felt ashamed. I felt like I let my family down. After everything my wife had already been through, and then this was just another thing to add to it. But now, I've been involved with ACORN, and I know I'm not the only one, I'm not alone, and that this has happened to a lot of people. I'd like to see a law passed to protect other people from this, and to let people who are in foreclosure know there are alternatives. Like when they send the sheriff's sale notice, if they can let people know about places that could help them. <coughs> I wish I could have gone that way rather than getting ripped off like we did. We're just trying to get by and live our lives. I know that if I went into McDonald's and ripped off $10 million or even $10, I'd be locked up immediately. But Henry Grant can make millions of dollars on us, and he's still out there walking around free. Thank you. Mr. Dixon, thank you for sharing your story. It's troubling, and I'm sorry. 
You're living in an apartment now? Yes. And you're working? Yeah. Senator Anderson, are there any questions? And Chase, thank you. Can Chase just say hello? Yes, of course. I'm grooming him. Yeah. <laughs> Watch out, whatever district you're in. Coming up. Then is it um, Ms. Alcacer? Yes. Would you like to speak for us? Thank you. Hi. To us. <clears throat> Thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Sandy Alcacer, and I was cheated by James Hoffman and Ron Esau. My husband and I bought our house in 1999. <coughs> We were separated and I was left with the house and the bills. I couldn't do it myself and fell behind on the mortgage. Around that time I also had back surgery and I, I went back to er work early because just to make ends meet. I owed about $95,000 on the house and it was worth about one fifty. dollars Now it's about up to one eighty. dollars I started to look for refinancing when I knew that I was going into foreclosure. I called Northwest Mortgage Company and they filled up, I filled out the documents and sent it back to them. Well, I didn't hear from them for a while, and so I kept contacting them, and they said that they had found a private investor. I questioned them about the private investor, and they said that the sheriff's sale was coming up, and that I had to do something quick, or I'd just be happy with the investor that I got. I didn't know then that I had six months after the sheriff's sale to sell my house or even refinance, or I would have, wouldn't have done what I did then. When I walked into the closing, I was still thinking that I was going to refinance my house and make payments to Northwest Mortgage. And during the whole closing, I continued to ask them if I was still going to be on title. I mean, it was, when I walked in there, they told me that I was going to be buying my, selling my house to James Hoffman Home Loan Funding Corporation and buying it back on a contract for deed. And I had asked them if I was going to be on title, and they said yes. I asked this question several times. But during the closing, they just the papers were just being flipped up, and I was just told to sign them and hurry up. And that's all they did was just kept telling me to hurry up and sign the papers. I didn't know I was buying my what I was buying my house back for because I wasn't able to see the the HUD. When I got home, I read the papers and told myself that this was crazy. I bought my house. I sold my house to Hoffman for a hundred thousand, and I was buying it back for a hundred and thirty-seven too. And I, I was also going to be paying $1,200 a month, and I used to pay $400 less than that when I went into foreclosure. The next morning, I called Northwest Mortgage and said that this man had just made $37,500.